Good morning. Good morning. I am so happy to see everyone on this bright Sunday in April. I am Reverend Wendy Hamilton, and you are now viewing my very first inaugural spirit talk. I'm so happy that you decided to join me and I'll be posting these talks every Sunday. Um, 11 o'clock around that time frame is good. I may change the time a little bit. I know that folks have uh, regular church services that they tune into. Some people wanted to tune in today and weren't going to be able to because they were tuning into their other services and I respect that. Uh, so I will definitely uh, keep that in mind, but I am I am thrilled just to be here and to get a chance to talk with you briefly and to welcome you to the Community of Compassion. The Community of Compassion, this channel is actually going to be a space where we can come together and gather regardless of what faith tradition you are, no faith at all. This is a place for comfort. This is a place for compassion. This is a place for, for, for sharing messages and inspiration and definitely a place for love. So I am grateful for the support that all of you all have given me. If you are new to me, new to this channel, welcome. How you doing? I'm so excited to have you and I look forward to you being a part of this community. So today I'm going to uh, talk for a little bit on a topic and these spirit talks, that's what they'll be. They'll be about particular topics uh, each week. Um, I'll also post prayers throughout the week, but the spirit talks really are designed to motivate us and to inspire us uh, to, to handle and deal with situations that we find ourselves in, in our lives, in, in a spiritual way, if possible, but with practical application. And so today's message is what to do when you don't know what to do. What to do when you don't know what to do. And of course, you know, this particular topic came to me because we are in a situation right now that is unprecedented uh, with this worldwide pandemic crisis, with the economy uh, bottoming out in ways that it hasn't in nearly a century. Some of us aren't sure what to do. We don't know if we're coming. We don't know if we're going. And we are not sure how things are going to play themselves out. And so we find ourselves a bit panicked in thinking about what to do. Like, what do I do if I don't know what to do? I don't know when I'm going back to work. If I'm going back to work, I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills next week or even tomorrow. Um, you know, even to the more trivial things. Some of us have been on quarantine now for a month or more, and we're not sure. I don't know about you, but for me, some, I don't know what day it is. Sometimes I have to remind myself, is this Tuesday? Is this Thursday? Um, should I put on clothes? Uh, should I be productive? All those thoughts. Should I try to do some work and appear busy or telework, of course, for those of you who do? Or should I just take this day and while away my time on social media or, or a, a huge Netflix binge, which I have done all of the above. And so none of those choices are wrong. And I, I want to encourage you today to understand that anything you're doing during this uh, particular time is not necessarily a wrong choice. Don't, don't assign value to it. You, me, and everyone else are doing what we can to get by, to manage until we know what our next steps are going to be. And that's totally okay. I think that I have heard, you know, scientific reports about how our bodies shield us and protect us from things we cannot handle sort of mentally. Um, at times, there are times when we just become so overwhelmed that we break. But there is a mechanism in our body that tries to shield and protect us from things that, that are hard for us to handle. And I think throughout this crisis, that's what's been happening. I really do think that our brains have kind of gone into a protective mode, if you will. Like, nope, this is too much to think about. You know, if you dwell too long on what the actual ramifications of a crisis such as this could be, it can be uh, mind blowing. And so our, our bodies kick into gear. I don't know if this is tied to the uh, fight or flight or what, but I know that our bodies are these miraculous 
created beings that do what they can to protect us and shield us. They, they're coping mechanisms that we put into place in order to take care of our minds and our hearts. And so for that, I'm very grateful. So if you are feeling that way today, um, what, 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 what am I supposed to do? I, I don't know what to do. Well, I'm here to just give you a few minutes of encouragement and say to you, if you don't know what to do, you don't have to do anything. That is the beauty of, of knowing that we were created as human beings, not human doings. Now, over time, you know, society has changed and we have become these uh, producers, if you will. And we, we tie our value to what we are doing, what we are able to produce. And that is sort of the opposite of what we cr were created to do and to be. I know there's lots of discussions right now about getting back to work and people wanting to work and to, to be out there and be productive, but at the same time, not doing anything, taking care of your health, uh, doing things to protect yourself is also a form of productivity. We in this nation, it seems, have uh, equated human value and economic value. And I don't know that that is the right um, perception of, of, of our value and of our worth. We, we have an inherent human dignity that's not tied to what we can and cannot do. And I know there are protests going on all over the country right now with people who wanna go back to work. Let me work, let me go back, let me go back. And it could be, I'm you know, speculating here, it could be that they're feeling unproductive in some ways uh, because they're used to working, they're used to, to, to being uh, out there and, and contributing in the form that they are most comfortable with. But, but that does not mean because they are not working right now, especially because it's out of our control, it doesn't lessen or diminish your value. Taking care of yourself, protecting your health, protecting your family, protecting the rest of us um, from getting sick is, is, is doing something. That, that's being productive in a different way. So it is my hope that uh, as we continue for the next few weeks, depending upon how much longer these uh, mechanisms will be in place in terms of staying at home and being quarantined, that we'll spend some time thinking about our own worth, our value, and how doing does not equate to being. We have been created and designed to just be, to be well, to be whole, to, to, to be complete. I, I often post, you know, scriptural references. I read a lot of texts, you know, including the Bible and other wisdom texts from other traditions. And I, I draw my, uh, examples and my inspiration from various sources, from, from poets and, and from mystics. I, I love to read spiritually uh, influenced materials. And so uh, I did happen to read, uh, I was reading the Bible on yesterday. There's a scripture that talks about uh, putting on the whole armor of God. So it describes, if you think about a, a, a soldier or centurion and him facing the unknown, facing a battle. And when you're doing that, that you can put on this armor, and, you know, that includes a, a helmet uh, of, of salvation and a, a breastplate of righteousness and the belt of truth and, 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 and shoes that are befitted with, with the gospel. So I, I was thinking about that from a metaphorical standpoint, that when we are in a situation where we don't know what to do, we can armor ourselves up with what we needed to do to protect ourselves and to just be. There's no set agenda that we have to follow. We are designed to take care of ourselves in the best way that we know how and to also look out and take care of our fellow man. So my encouragement for you today is not just to worry about doing, <laughs> because believe me, soon enough, we will be right back out there again. As soon as these states do start opening back up, we're going to be right back out there doing a whole lot. <laughs> we'll be out there and we'll be um, producing and, and, and putting back into the economy. But now is not the time necessarily for us to be able to do that. That is okay. So 
I, I encourage you today to just be, to just know that you're being silent, being quiet, uh, using some time for meditation, for reflection. That's all we're called to be. That's it. Sometimes we make things more complicated <laughs> as human beings than we, than we need to be. We are created to be uh, present. And when I say present, be present to ourselves as well as those around us in the community. And I'm not one for cliches. And so I hope that as you continue to follow my messages, you'll find that I'm really about taking scriptural principles, spiritual principles, and, and providing a practical application of those principles, because I believe that's what they're there for. They're there for us to uh, incorporate them into our, our practical lives. And so I try to break it down to make it make sense. Uh, and you can use it um, in your own daily life. But being present to yourself means listening to yourself and agreeing and choosing to follow that inclination. So for instance, if you wake up and your body is saying, you know what, today I need rest. I don't, I don't want to do any, I just need to be able to rest. Being present to your body says today then, that's what we're going to do. And I know that th that's not um, feasible sometimes for those who might have, you know, family to, to tend to. So rest in a way of whatever, however rest looks for you. But being present to yourself is acknowledging your own worth and your own value and taking care of yourself so that you can be more productive and available to other people. Um, being present to your family or, or, or to your children during this time. I know there is a lot of pressure and my prayer is certainly for those who are finding themselves in some very difficult situations. I, um, my heart and my soul goes out to you. I, I've, I've seen, you know, online people pleading for 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 help and for support. Um, even here in our city of Washington D.C., the um, incidences of domestic violence have increased um, just because people are, you know, spending more time together probably than they have in a long time and. People are impatient and fuses are short. I'm not making excuses whatsoever. I am just suggesting that that is what's happening. And so please do not feel as though uh, the spiritual wisdom and advice I'm offering here applies to every situation. I recognize that and it doesn't. I am merely just offering ways for us to be reflective during this time and to take the best care of ourselves that we can until things get back to normal, whatever normal looks like after this. So again, if you are in a situation um, or you're watching this today and you're saying, I have no idea what to do. Uh, I'm so confused. Well, just know this, <laughs> you're not alone. We're all kind of figuring this out as we go along. But I do believe, and it's my hope that after this, whenever after is, that we will be so much better I am hoping that this has given us an opportunity to think about as a country and as, as, as people and as a community, as humanity, what it is we value and what it is we prioritize and perhaps think about maybe rearranging some of those priorities. This is not just uh, a situation that is infecting, <laughs> infecting, I shouldn't say, I mean, affecting, uh, but infecting literally the United States. This is a worldwide pandemic. It's almost as if the universe has said, okay, I need everybody to slow up for a moment. I need everybody to slow up just a minute, um, take some time out <laughs> and, and think about what you've done. Think about how you have taken care of the planet. Think about how you've taken care of one another. Think of how maybe we've gotten away from or gotten off course from where we used to be. I, I, I am hoping that we see something different, that we see a different manifestation of our, our humanness, our connectedness and our humanity moving forward. Because I think this, if, if we don't, we will have wasted, I think a beautiful opportunity to do so. So listen, if you don't know what to do, <laughs> when you don't know what to do, you don't have to do anything. Not, not one single solitary thing, just be. 
be and being, being quiet, maybe being contemplative and, and being prayerful can give you guidance. It can give you clarity on what the next step uh, for you can be. And all we have to do is, is take the one right next step, whatever that is. And sometimes just being um, gives us some insight into what that's going to be. So I hope that that's helpful for you. I do just want to say a quick prayer and I'll wrap today's talk up. And just uh, if you want to join me for those who are prayers or um, however you um, take posture in prayer, God, I thank you for those who have joined the Spirit Talk today. And I just ask that you infuse each and every one of us with a peace that passes all understanding. God, I do recognize that many of us are still feeling uncertain, feeling anxious and feeling scared because we don't know what to do, how to respond. But I thank you for our, our leaders and government officials and those who have been proactive in helping guide and lead us and prepare us and navigate us through this time. Keep us near to one another, keep us close uh, to you in spirit and, and help us to use this time to our advantage and to prayerfully come out of this better. It is in all of your names we pray. Amen. So I do hope that this was uh, helpful to you. I'll be posting these every week on Sundays. Also during the week, I will post a, a devotional, a, a scripture and a prayer. Please subscribe, like, comment, share. Oh, I see someone's here from the Philippines. I love my worldwide people. I've seen folks from Germany. I think this is fantastic. Thank you so much for joining. And again, like, share, comment, subscribe, if you will. Let your friends know this is a place where all are welcome, all faiths, all, all walks of life from everywhere. I want you to be here because you matter, you're valued, and I want to help um, inspire your spirit as well. Thank you so much uh, for being here. And I look forward to joining you again next week. By the way, if there are any particular topics you would like for me to touch on, please drop that in the comments and I, I will de definitely take those under consideration. I've got lots of stuff to talk to you about, letting go, forgiveness, all types of topics that we'll cover in these spirit talks. But again, if there's something that's on your heart, something you've been struggling with that you want me to talk about, feel free to leave it in the comments. I'll take a look at it and uh, hopefully we'll get it scheduled. Have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. And if you have been busy doing all this time, I give you permission <laughs> to just be today. Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye.